نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلله فلا هادي له ونشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد ان سيدنا وحبيبنا ومولانا محمدا عبده ورسوله اما بعد فاعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم سبحان الذي اسرى بعبده ليلا من المسجد الحرام الى المسجد الاقصى الذي باركنا حوله لنريه من اياتنا انه هو السميع البصير وقال تعالى في مقام اخر وما منعنا ان نرسل بالايات إلا أن كذب بها الأولون وآتينا ثمودا ناقة بصرة فظلموا بها وما نرسل بالآيات إلا تخويفا وإذ قلنا لك إن ربك حاط بالناس وما جعلنا الرؤيا التي أريناك إلا فتنة للناس والشجرة الملعونة في القرآن ونخوفهم فما يزيدهم إلا طغيانا كبيرا وقال تعالى في مقام آخر والنجم إذا هوى ما ظل صاحبكم وما غوى وما ينطق عن الهوى علمه شديد القوى ذو مرة فاستوى وهو بالأفق الأعلى ثم دنا فتدلى فكان قاب قوسين أو أدنى فأوحى إلى عبده ما أوحى ما كذب الفؤاد ما رأى فتمارونه على ما يرى ولقد رآه مرة نزلة أخرى عند سدرة المنتهى عندها جنة المأوى إذ يغشى السدرة ما يغشى ما زاغ البصر وما طغى لقد رأى من آيات ربه الكبرى 
صدق اللہ و صدق رسوله النبی الكریم My dear respected brothers and sisters in Islam Different months and days have religious, uh, religious significance in Islam while certain other months and days are there which has an historical significance. The month of Rajab that has a religious significance Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said in a hadith Rajab Shaharullah wa Shaban Shahari wa Ramadan Shaharu Ummati The month of Rajab which is now in its very end that is the month of Allah the coming month which is Shaban that is my month and the following month of Ramazan is the month of my Ummah. So this nisbat in attribution means something. Then another thing is, Kana Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam yasumu kulla awwal yawm min shahri rajab. Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to do fasting of each and every first day of the month of Rajab. And my dear respected brothers and sisters, there is a historical significance of this month as well according to certain ulama. Because this is a matter of aqeedah that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam on the night of ascension, he went upon the seven heaven. When it happened, even the ears, ulama have different point of views. That was in the fifth year after Nabuwa. It was in the seventh year after Nabuwa. Or that was in the tenth year after Nabuwa. And then, same is the case regarding months that that was in Rajab or that was in Jumada Saniya. So there are different point of views in this regard. And why it is so? The Ummah agreed upon that it happened. That is the religious significance. When it happened, that is a historical one. And religion has nothing to do with history. My dear respected brothers and sisters in Islam, that's why Sahaba did not speak about the specific date of Paraj. They were talking about the event of Paraj and what happened on that night. But as you know, that we the Muslims, we are emotional rather than to be sensible. Number one. And number two, that we are People who are celebrating, we are not people who are practicing. We do not know that what is the purpose of the message of the Holy Prophet But oh, in Rabi Ulawal, he was born, let's have a food and let's have the lights and let's celebrate. What is this? You are losing actually the spirit and the ruh of Deen. And when? A specific community loses the spirit of deen. So all their rituals becomes a custom. Our custom becomes their ritual. Rasam and reward become their ritual, which has nothing to do with their deen. Same is the case of Christianity. And that's why when a religion or a specific ideology loses its spirit and ruh, that is just like a dead body. And as you know, the dead body you can sympathize only and a dead body that is nothing and that's why the Christians they tried to their best 
to attract people to come to the churches because spirituality was not there. So people were not coming. So they started refreshment after services. So people were coming for snacks. And then after a while, they got fed up with their. So they said free lunch would be served. And everything in America is in abundance. But when there is free food, people are becoming crazy. Doesn't matter they are Christian, Jew, Hindus or Muslims. But they become crazy, I don't know why. And then when they got fed up with that free food as well. So they said light musical concert will take place after services. Yes. Ah, nowadays the word is everything under one roof is available. Yes. So they will be playing games. There will be football. There will be volleyball. There will be basketball. There will be tennis. There will be things like that. And maybe there will be some services. Because now that does not have any importance. I think, I am sorry to say, that we the Muslim are proceeding in the same direction. And that's why we are going for customs. We are going for bid'ah. We are innovating things. And we do that because our desires are fulfilled there. And actually you know that Islam are the means to control desire. Respected brothers and sisters in Islam. So all over the world. The Muslim are celebrating yesterday while watching TV. All over the Muslim world. People are celebrating Shab e Mehraj or the night of ascension. What is this brother? Where from you have got the idea? Abu Bakr celebrated it? No. Just tell me. No. Prophet no. Salaam himself celebrated it? No. Omar celebrated it? No. Any Sahabi or Tabi celebrated it? But as I, know, uh, as I said, that when a religion loses its spirit and its very life and spirituality, then we are going for artificial thing. Then we are going for superficial thing. Yes, we have to know about Barak. We have to know about the night of ascension. And we have to know about the message Prophet Sallallahu got there from. That why it happened. How it happened? The simple answer is, it is Allah. He does what He wills. In Allah, ya follow my read. Number two, actually, they was giving a dignity and respect to Prophet Muhammad. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. As you know, when you will go to the space, you can watch the whole world. Can you or not? Yes. When you go to the space, you can watch the whole world. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he was Khatabun Nabiyyin. He was the messenger of the entire world. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala lifted him up not only to the space, beyond space, upon the seven heaven, that actually this is your kingdom, religious kingdom, this is your kingdom, a spiritual one, you are a messenger, not only to the human, even to the angels. Jibreel is proud to be a servant of you, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa So actually, there was a dignity and respect which was given by Allah to Prophet Muhammad say sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. What a great man he was. What a great personality he is in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And number two or number three that is that the people of Makkah as you know and surrounding area they used to give a tough time to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam calling him names. Torturing him mentally beating his followers as well, even killing them. Respected brothers and sisters in Islam, Prophet Sallallahu he made a plan to leave Mecca and to have a base somewhere else and to propagate his mission there from. For the set purpose, he went to Taif, but the same thing happened there. The people of Taif, they couldn't shelter Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that actually we cannot counter the people of Mecca. That is difficult for us because Mecca is our center. We have to go there anyway. If we will shelter you, it means we are calling for the enmity of the people of Mecca. And not only they, they were very much afraid of that the Prophet Muhammad himself, he will stay here. Again, that will be a problem for us. So that's why they asked the youth and the teenager 
to hit Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam with stone and to turn him out of their city, not only city, but in the out from the outskirts of the city of Taif, and they did it. Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was bleeding. His colleague and his adopted son Zayd ibn Haritha radhiyallahu taala an, he was trying to defend Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. to take each and every stone and rock on his own body and to protect the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam but that was just like a rain storm so prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was bleeding from head to toe zaid ibn haritha was bleeding from head to toe they came out for 3 miles these people they were following prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam when they came out of taif in an area known by the name of an nakhla where there were dead palms trees gardens and the graves were there the flowing waters and the gushing fountains were there prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said to zaid ibn haritha we have to stay here for a few days and night so we may be okay because now we are bleeding we have to wash our body and we will stay here to heal or to get healing so they were staying there for a few days and night Zaid ibn Haritha asked Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam that now what we will do Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam told him we will go back to Makkah yes because if a person is turned out of an area where he has gone having a valid visa or not but the visa time is gone he has to go back to his own hometown so he said that we have to go to Makkah Zaid ibn Haritha said oh the messenger of Allah Makkah again he said of course we have to go to makkah and in that position prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said oh allah subhanahu wa taala why you are handing me over to such like people who did it to me so jibril i mean approach him if you want them to get crushed so i have malakul jibal or the angel of mountains in my company he is accompanying me so you should order him he will squeeze them between two mountains and crush them in pieces prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said no allahumma ihdi qaumi fa innahum la ya'lamun they do not understand what i am doing and conveying them that's for their own good but they do not understand that's why they did to me what they did respected brothers and sisters in islam anyhow prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he came back to makka how he got into because he left the area So how he got into? So first of all, he approached two, three chief tens of very major tribes, but they apologized to him. Then Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam he approached Muhtar ibn Adi, the chief of his own tribe. That I want your shelter and your protection if you can take me back to Mecca. So he was a man of character, even though he was a non-Muslim. But he was a man of character. He was not believing in Prophet Muhammad. But when he asked him for help, he said, "Okay." So he sent his sons. They had bring Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Take him first of all to the house of Allah. Let him make his tawab, and then take him back to his own home. So they came. They were riding their horses. Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam came to the house of Allah. He performed his tawab. Abu Jahl. He approached the Muttam ibn Adi. and he said and asked him awa saddaqtahu am jawarta that you believed in his message or you sheltered him only so mutta bin ali told him jawartuhu faqat i have sheltered him so nobody may touch him he said okay of course we will never touch him because that was a problem if somebody will touch muhammad who got sheltered by mutta bin ali a tribal feud would have happened there respected brothers and sisters in islam now two things number one allah subhanahu wa taala they have sent jibril to tell him but that was not known to the people of makkah but at night prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam in nakhla he was praying his prayer he was reciting surah ar rahman a few jinn or demons they attended that prayer and they listened to holy quran In Surah Al-Ahqaf, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala relates the story. We sorrowna ilayk nafar min al-jin yastamiun al-Quran. Falma hadaru, qalu ansitu. Falma kuziyawallu ila qomihim munzirin. 
They say, oh, listen to this man, what he is saying. So they were listening to Prophet Sallallahu very attentively. So they never showed themselves to Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. They went back to their own people that we heard a man. He has received a message from Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Inna sami'na kitaban unzila min ba'd Musa musaddiqan lima bayna yadayhi yahdi ila al-haqq wa ila tariq al-mustaqim. That we have listened to a book which has been sent down by Allah after the Torah of Musa and after Musa. Now the Mufassirin they say, why they mention Musa? While Prophet ﷺ came after Isa, yes, right before him, 500 years before, Isa was the last prophet. They mentioned him because they were Jew. They did not believe in the message of Jesus. They believed in the message of Moses. So that's why they mentioned their own messenger Musa alayhi salatu wasalam. My dear respected brothers and sisters in Islam, now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He showed to the people of Makkah that if He wants, so He can crush you in few minutes because jinn are listening to Him. So if He will order only one single jinn, how you will handle Him? Innahu yaraakum huwa kabiluhu min hisulatarawnahum because jinn can see you from all around and you do not see Him. So if you do not look at your enemy and he will be hitting you, what you can do with? You don't have any target and he has the proper target. That was one message. And the second message, what is the dignity and respect of Muhammad وسلم, in the eyes of Allah? If you do not believe in his message, are the people of Taif turned him out and stoning him he got injured, but in the eyes of Allah, he is that much respected that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will take him upon the seventh heaven. That is number one. And number two, the people of Makkah, they used to ask the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, if you are a messenger, so you may show us some miracles and some mujizat, even though the number of the mujizat of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is thousands in number. Abu Na'im, rahimahullah, he has written, he is a well-known muhaddis, he has written a book in this regard, Dalail al nubuwa Imam Bayhaqi, he has written a book in the same name, Dalail al nubuwa Imam Sayyuti, he has written a book, al khasayat al kubra al Sayyuti, there they have mentioned the mu'ajizat and miracles of Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, and these mu'ajizat are thousands in number. کہ حسن یوسف دم عیسیٰ ید بیزہ داری آنکہ خوبہ حمد آرند تو تنہا داری that whatever معجزات and miracle all the messengers and prophet of Allah had you have more than all of them so anyhow my dear respected brothers and sisters in Islam رسول اللہ صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم the people of Mecca and surrounding area they used to ask him that show us this type of معجزات this type of mujiza, they were asking for a miracle of their own choice. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, there are three things. In the Surah Tafsir, we have mentioned it. Number one, mujiza and miracle, that is not a, required, a requirement of nubuwa and prophethood. A prophet or a messenger is not bound to show mujiza or miracle. Yes? So that's why there are many, many prophets and messengers they did not show even a single miracle to their followers because the message is to convey the message. Messenger is to convey the message, not to show the miracles. He is not a magician to show the miracles. That is number one. And number two, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, miracles are not in the hands of the messenger. These are in the hands of Allah. Whenever he wants, so he shows us some miracle by the hands or on the hands of a messenger. Alayhi salatu wa salam. And number three, if some people will ask a messenger, so look into the history. Those who ask a messenger of a miracle to show them of their own choice. And he showed it and later on they did not believe. So that was the end of the story. They were gone. 
they got destroyed. So actually, not to show them a miracle of their own child, this is also a type of my mercy towards them. I don't want to crush them. I don't want to crush them because I know that they will not believe in your message after showing the same miracle. So the story, that will be the end of the story. And they are gone. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَا مَنَعَنَا أَن نُرْسِلَ بِالْآيَاتِ إِلَّا أَن كَذَّبَ بِهَا الْأَوَّلُ The ayat which I have recited. That nothing has stopped me to show them the mojiz that they are asking for. But the only thing which stops us, the history of the previous people. وَمَا مَنَعَنَا أَن نُرْسِلَ بِالْآيَاتِ إِلَّا أَن كَذَّبَ بِهَا الْأَوَّلُ And in this regard, Allah gave only one example. Example. وَآتِنَ سَمُودَ النَّاقَةَ مُبْسِرَةً فَظَلَمُوا بِهَا Let's look into the people of Samud. What happened to them? I showed them the miracle of she camel pregnant of 10 months coming out of a rock there in the valley of Hijr. But what they did to that mojiza and that what happened to them. وَآتِنَا سَمُودَ النَّاقَةَ مُبْسِرَةً فَظَلَمُوا بِهَا وَمَا نُرْسِلُ بِالْآيَاتِ إِلَّا تَخْوِيفًا And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that we do not send ayat and mojizat but only to warn the people so they may believe in the message of the messenger concerned. Respected brothers and sisters in Islam. Anyhow, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says أَوَلَمْ يَكْفِهِمْ آيَةً أَوَلَمْ يَكْفِهِمْ this is not enough emojiza and miracle, the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and each and every single ayah of Holy Quran. They cannot compete it, even though they do not believe therein that this is the message of Allah or the word of Allah. So they are Arab, they are literate, they are writing books, they are very well known poets. They are very well known poets and even Diwanul Arab are the literature of the time of ignorance. Literature of the time of ignorance that is actually a source of the interpretation of Holy Quran. When we want to interpret a specific word of Holy Quran, we go to the time of Jahiliyyah before Rasulullah that far are in what meaning they were using this word. Yes, and that what Sahaba, Rizwanullah alayhi wa jma'in, they used to, to, to do so. Sayyidina Umar, Razi Allah ta'ala an, once he was asking about a specific word, so an old Sahabi was sitting there, and he said that actually Zuhair ibn Harb, he has mentioned in one of his uh, words, this word, in this, are such like meaning. So anyhow, Sayyidina Umar Razi Allah ta'ala an, when he explained it, so then he said, Alaykum, Alaykum 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 So you have to look into your Diwan. So they asked Sayyidina Umar wa ma Diwanuna. What is our Diwan? He said Shayarul Jahiliya. That the poetry of the time of ignorance. That that is the Diwan. Fa inna fihi tafsiru kitabikum. Sayyidina Umar said that dear friend. You can find out the tafsir and interpretation of your book, the book of Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Turn it off. That there from, the book of Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. You can explain the book of Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. There from, Diwan al-Arab and Shi'ar al-Jahiliyyah. My dear respected brothers and sisters in Islam. So anyhow, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, they are asking for mojiza, so let me give you a mojiza. And that is such a mojiza that nobody can deny and refuse it, and nobody can compete it. Even in the history, that something like that happened to anybody. So, how it happened? This is Maharaj. And as you know, that Maharaj is consists of two portions or two parts. Number one, a journey from Mecca to Jerusalem, or from Betullah to Baitul Maqdis and the second one therefrom to the seven heaven and upon the seven heaven the first part is called Isra and the second part is called the Mi'raj Isra means traveling at night so Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he traveled at night from Mecca to Baitul Maqdis that is called Isra and that is mentioned in the first ayah of Surah Bani Israel Subhanallazi Asra bi abdihi laylam min al masjid al haram and the second part or second portion, which is Mi'raj, that is mentioned there in Surah An-Najm. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَقَدْ رَآهُ 
نزلتن اخرى عند صدرت المنتهى عندها جنات المعوى از يغش صدرت ما يغشا As you know, my dear respected brothers and sisters in Islam, that Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he asked the Archangel Jibreel, can you show me yourself in your proper shape? Because as you know, that what is jinn?